Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Savage coming to you from the University of Mobile in Mobile, Alabama. I'm the director for the Center for Leadership and also the executive dean of the School of Christian Ministries there. And I want to encourage you in you being a leader. And today that's what we're going to talk about is what is leadership? You know, a lot of people don't feel like they're a leader. They're capable of leading. But leadership, while some people are born with that trait, most people are, most of us have to work on becoming a leader. But let's first define what leadership is. Leadership is nothing more than influence. It's influencing people from where they are to where God wants them to be. Or it could be influencing them towards anything, where they are towards something else. You see, let me ask you a question. When is Nick Saban, the head football coach at the University of Alabama, uh, Billy Graham, the great evangelist of old, and Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy magazine, what do the three of them all have in common? Well, the answer I'm looking for is they were all leaders. They're all influencers, right? Saban influencing people toward championships. Billy Graham influencing people towards a relationship with Christ. Hugh Hefner influencing people towards uh, a, 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 a sense of sexuality in society that the country had never seen before, right? And so all three of those men were influencers, and that's what leadership is. Leadership is influence. The question is, where are you going to lead people in your life? Is it going to be towards a relationship with Christ, becoming a disciple of Christ? Is it towards money? Is it towards prosperity? Is it towards a lifestyle? Is it toward, you know, uh, uh, trying to change culture? What what is? Where are you leading people toward? And that's the beauty of leadership. Leadership's not just a position at the top of an organization. Leadership is being an influencer, whether you're at the top, the middle, or the bottom, because you can influence in the people around you. In essence, you're leading the people around you. There's a scripture in Matthew chapter 4 I want to read you. It's the story of Jesus when he first encountered Peter and his brother Andrew. Peter and Andrew were both fishermen. They had this little fishing business. They would go out and catch fish. They'd come back in. They would take it to the market and sell their fish. And people would buy that fish to have seafood dinner, have seafood dinner right? That's what they did for years. And then Jesus is walking along the Sea of Galilee. He encounters these two fishermen. And he looks over at them, Matthew 4, 19, and he says, Follow me, and I'll make you a fisher of men. Now, what we see there is this concept of, if you follow, Jesus says, follow me, and I'll make you an influence of people. Now, clearly, that was evangelistically, a relationship with Christ. And when someone comes to know Jesus, they're influenced, what, their whole mindset, their attitude, their lifestyle, their integrity, uh, their happiness, their joy, their peace. They in it influences how they parent or how they grandparent, how they're going to be a son or daughter, right? All of that gets influenced when someone becomes a Christ follower. And so there's nothing greater than that. But what Jesus was saying to Andrew and Peter was quit influencing through your business toward prosperity or making money or whatever. He was saying, this is what you've been doing. Now I'm going to teach you, if you follow me, how to be a fisher of men. And that's what leadership is. That's what I call gospel-centered leadership. It's what we're going to talk about through a series of videos that we're producing, I hope that you'll watch, is how are you to be a gospel-centered leader in your church, in the organization where you might work, or in the company where you might work, or as a student, a parent, a, a whatever, right? How are you going to be a gospel-centered leader that influences the people around you most significantly? And the thing is this, it's who you follow is where you're going to lead people. And you can't lead others until you lead yourself. But every person follows something or someone. Think about this for a moment. Some corporations, right? It's all about the dollar. They're, they're driven by uh, securing more funding, etc. So they chase after the money. They follow the money. Thus, the people that's around them, they influence them towards that. Some people are influenced by, I want a nicer home, I want a nicer car, I want a boat or whatever. So they get influenced by that. They're following after that dream of having a nicer home. Thus, that's where they follow. Thus, that's where they lead people. It becomes who they are. Some, like in the, in the sports world, are chasing after trophies. Nothing wrong with that. I'm as big a sports fan as anyone. But the bottom line is, if that becomes the end all, of everything, then that's where it leads people towards that. The problem is this, all of that has an ending to it. 
Whereas a, the, 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 the gospel-centered leadership understands there's life beyond the trophy, there's life beyond the dollar, there's life in spite of me not getting a nicer house or if I have a mansion in the right part of town. The bottom line is we understand, gospel-centered leaders understand that it's about Jesus Christ and it's about me leading people from where they are to where God wants them to be in and through the mechanism or the assignment that God has placed in my life in the workplace, in the home, in the school, in the gym, in the grocery store, or whatever, right? That's what leaders do. And God has called you to be a leader, right? You might feel, not feel like one, but he's called you to be one. John Maxwell has a thing that's called, uh, an ideal that's called, uh, uh, in his book, The 21 Laws of Leadership, Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He has the law of the lid. It's the first chapter he talks about. And Maxwell says, so eloquently is that if you're an eight in your skill set and your intellect and your education, but you're a five in regards to influence and leadership, then the truth is all of this that you are as an eight becomes a five because you're not able to influence other people. But if you can increase your level of leadership and increase your level of influence by becoming a better leader, now it matches your eight. Now you're an eight of a scale of one to ten across the board. You see, I don't care what degree you might have or not have. I don't care how much money you have or don't have or what position that you might or might not have. The simple truth is this. God's called you to be a leader, which means you're an influencer. And in that influence, wherever you are, is what you're chasing after. And if you follow Jesus, then you're going to influence other people toward him. And as you do so then you're now becoming a gospel-centered leader. And at the end of the day, you're, as that capacity to lead rises, this skills can be learned, right? Experience takes time. All of that can come up. But don't, don't cap yourself off by learning and knowing all this stuff, but be staying a five as a leader or six as a leader. You want to work on your leadership skill and study the people who you want to emulate, study books on leadership, study leadership from the scriptures. That's what we're going to be doing through the, ser through the series. Hang around people, learn from people who, who are great leaders, and then you're going to become a better leader yourself. And more important, most importantly, ask God to help you become a better influencer, right? He said, uh, shine your light. A light is an influence in the darkness. That's what the leader does. He, goes into the, he or she goes into the place of darkness and carries the light. He or she helps people go from where they are to where God wants them to be. He or she leads themselves toward being toward Christ, and as doing so, other people follow through the influence of that one individual. So you are a leader. I hope you'll chase after that, understand that, and hone your skills. And I hope these videos that we're that we're producing is going to help you uh, become a better leader. Uh, read the books. I, I think Maxwell's books are great on the twenty one years people lost. Of leadership, Henry Blackaby has a great book called Spiritual Leadership uh, that's out, and there's others. But let God shape you and form you into who He wants you to be, and you go lead people because that's what God has called you to do. That's who you are. God bless. Thanks for watching this video. Contact us if we can be of any help to you.